Okay, J.O., so uh, I think we got a pretty good section on Harold Carver. Yeah, like, did you see some of the brackets? I, I did. Yeah. I saw uh, Gray Burnett get takedown, too. Yeah, and, and, and listen, the guy kept putting him in really bad positions, too. It was a first-round match. Right. There's some, some, tough, uh, some tough brackets even for a section. So. You know, and then there's, you know, it's like any tournament, some big ones, some small ones, and in between ones. So. Okay, everything is always about the business aspect and creating more opportunities and helping kids, right? Uh, it's all... about making, you know, events better, right? Well, right. Yeah, yeah, right, and it's... So, like, listen, it was funny. Uh, the Perrysburg coaches were at Ironman, at four guys, and we started talking. Yeah, but the whole point is, and Coach Izzy and I, you know, Izzy Martinez, um, mm -hmm. we I just... Who was back in the day? Did he? Are you serious? No, no, that's right. They're the same age. I think they wrestled at TOC one year. That's, you have to dig that up. That's wild. Some knowledge for you. But, you know, he's John Jones' wrestling coach. You know, he's one of the most renowned wrestling coaches in the world, you know, right? Especially if we're talking MMA. But we, we just don't like the, how that event's run, the venue. It's small. You guys, you really run a top-notch event, every event I go to, right? So when I look at it in that sense, right, Izzy and I, are, we're, we're on the same page about Iron Man. Can you guys go run Iron Man? Is that, is that a thing you could do? Uh, I think they got, you know, the right people. It's just I think they like to keep it at, at Walsh, right? I mean, it's, you know, it keeps it an exciting atmosphere. You know, you put it in somewhere big, it's, uh, you might lose its, you know, yeah, you, know, you look at Super 32 finals when everyone's around the, I was just talking to someone else about this, like, right? Super 32 finals, you have everyone around the bracket, or excuse me, the finals mat, it kind of gets it some hype to it, you know, and then obviously from the you know, Walsh's standpoint, you know, you move it to you know, wherever it is, then you got to pay rent and move mats and all that stuff in the league, so, uh, you know, I think they're doing fine, they're, they're doing something right over there, right? They're just not doing no OAC fine as far as the, the organization, I mean, your event is a, just a smooth run machine, and it's very fan-friendly, especially at that the last level. The last level is like the most fan friendly environment I've ever seen in the sense that everybody can see every mat. Right, right. right. Just, you don't so miss you, any it's action. It's hard to do that. I mean, you know, Real hard. It's really hard to do, yeah. So that, that venue works out, works out nice. You know, I've seen every match. And, you know, it's still hard to follow because, you know, you got so many kids sometimes wrestling. But it's, it, I think it's an ideal venue for, for spectators and coaches. I, I guess maybe if somebody from the Ironman's watching this, maybe they should look into the Cavalli. Yeah. It, it's, a great, it's a great venue. There's a lot more that goes into it, though, too. You know, you know, is it available? You know, they have a hockey team up there, you know, at Cavalli. You, know, you get pulled out of Ironman, you know, how you get mats there, and the cost associated with that. It's a little different. I know there's a lot more people, but how cool it would be, you know. As a fan, I would like to be there, right? If you as a fan would love yeah. to see that, right? Yeah, I would go I would be a fan. To, right. Yeah, I'm sure you can draw in some extra people that you can watch all 12 mats and, at once and see those highlight matches. So, you know, as a fan, but obviously they have... You know, with it being a high school event at a high school, so a lot more to look through and look through. So. Okay, this is our first year for, for sectionals, right? right. right. The, the, the districts were bursting at the seam. Right. The opportunity was there to provide more opportunity. I felt like, I feel that's a proper way to put it, right? Right. right. right? And, and it was time and the growth, and I was talking to Hurley about the growth. Ryan Hurley won the first OEC, right? It's yeah. so yeah. crazy, yeah. right? Here, so. Jaggers won the first OEC. Right. So crazy to look back at the guys who win the first OACs. It's just, you know, it's just such a great event. But um, let's talk proud uncle moment. Come on, let's talk proud uncle oh, moment. You it, yeah. Right? You no, that it. was awesome, man. That's what I'm here for, though. He loves it. I right? Love to sport. You're exactly right. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. Yep. So, uh, yeah, he was pretty cool watching him. You know, you can see him watching him wrestle, and he's excited. He likes the sport and his winning, and, you know, so, you know, let's, hopefully. He continues to like it and sticks with it, so I'm sure he will. Lucky for him, he looks like his mom. He's got mom's hair. Good for oh, that guy. Pretty Drew. He's pretty Drew through and through. Uh, I know. There's, sure. there's one of them that looks just like her, though. Was it the older uh, yeah. one? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're a good mix. They're yeah. Like the next one. I got to show you a video okay. uh, of his other son today. They were dressed at Bellevue. Um, I, will, uh, I will send it to you to tweet out, but his son, after the uh, national anthem, they're at Bellevue. The, the, the flag's coming down, and they're standing underneath it waiting. And he, after the national anthem, over, he just double legs his team. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. You got, you got to tweet it out. It's pretty funny. Okay, so, you know, you get to watch your, your – uh, you have a great relationship with your brothers, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you get to watch your nephew, you know, at your tournaments. That's right, sweet. Right, He's right. dancing, too. Right. That's cool. the same thing, right? You're right? here, and you get to Yeah, dance. yeah, yeah. You know, the result is a little different from my nephew, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? He got mixed. It's a long, it's a long, long It is. Road. It's a process. 
And I think it's hard for young people to understand that. But, you know, proud Uncle Momo, that you don't normally get to do that, I guess, is the whole point. Normally, it's, it's business. It's all business with Jared Alper. He's... He's all gas pedal, right? I mean, but that's that's nice, right? Is that a nice little? Is that a right, refreshing right, break? Right, right. And it makes it, you know, keeps you in perspective because you know Drew is a new parent with it, so he's like, hey, what are you seeing from a new parent side of it? So I gotta keep in mind, okay, this is what the parents are going through. And you know, Drew's, you know, he wrestled, at, he wrestled at Division One level. He's been through wrestling, he's coached wrestling, and, but now he's in the dad role, so it kind of helps me keep perspective on these events on what what the dads are looking for and the questions they have. So it makes. You know, our team of people putting on the events. Okay, this is what the dads are seeing. You know, this is what the dads want. And so it's, it's you know, he's not afraid to give feedback and, you know, how we can make things better. So. We're talking to him and Mike Hurley. Both guys qualified for the NCAA tournament. So they, they've been, they've seen that level, the dog-eat-dog -dog level, right? They've been at the highest level where, where scholarships are a, a thing. And both guys were probably full-ride guys for the, I, mean, I don't know, but they're pretty good, right? When you think about that. I mean, it's crazy to think that now they almost like had to regress. Right. Right? Even talking to Mike, he's got to change because he's wild. Right. Drew was wild. They right. did wild, crazy stuff that I don't know if you can teach a lot of stuff. Right. Like I, I joked with Drew, hey, did you teach him to reach back? No. Right? And he's like, yeah, I was gonna. But, you know, like he's in a match there where it's tight. He's winning by a point. The guy does a full Nelson or something. And he's got a two-point lead. And I was like, I'm waiting for this dude to reach back and go to his back. Right. 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 You know what I'm saying, that's right? And he was, he was about to. But that, now teaching wrestling, it's, it's hard for those guys mm -hmm. because they were pretty good and they did it unorthodox, right? Mm -hmm. right. That's kind of cool to see, though. They got to develop as, as men, though, right. as teachers, right? right? It keeps you young, right? Keeps you young. I, Hurley, that guy's so, what's that guy drinking? Yeah. Hurley is drinking some like fountain of youth water, a guy don't age. <laughs> the, well, the dad and, yeah, and Mike, holy smokes, they look amazing. Good for those guys. Okay. Last thing, where are we going to see you guys next? How many sectionals? I'm at I'm at Kenston, but how many other sectionals are there? And then how many districts do they feed in for OEC? So there's three going on this weekend, Springboro, New Lexington, and, and obviously Oak Harbor. Um, so there's 13 more, and they feed into the eight districts. But, um, you know, I think this is exactly what we're trying to get to. You know, instead of having you've been at Jackson, you've been at Breedman Park, which is busting at the seams, and it's just kind of crazy. And this is kind of a more manageable atmosphere. And, you know, we get, you know, a couple of years into this sectional district model, I think it's going to be what's best for uh, youth wrestling in Ohio. You know, it definitely, you know, we put a lot of time and thought and obviously resources back into these sectionals, you know, not for just this year, but for the long road. So I think that's, you know, that's the ultimate plan is, you know, having it three levels to this is definitely what's going to be best for, for youth wrestling in Ohio. You know, it takes those mid-level guys, like we're saying, it's a, it's a journey, it's a path, you got to, you know, you're, you walk into a district at, you know, Jackson, you got a 32-man bracket at eight years old. It can be kind of overwhelming for a parent. Not, three <laughs> gems? Kid, three alone, gems? Yeah, let alone a kid. Yeah, you know, it's three so, gems, isn't it? it? It's, it's a big school. They have so, three yeah, gems, yeah, I want to yeah, say. They're, they're, it's ginormous. It's so, so crazy. So anyways, yeah, you're, I know you're going to be at a few. And um, you know, we got, you know, a couple other guys. Uh, I know Martin Neiman's going to be at a couple. It's a cruiser. Rob Gore, talk to, you know, to, can, can we yeah, harness yeah, the energy of both those guys? And run all the power around here because yeah, they, they got some gojis. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're great dudes. So, great guys. So we got they you know those going on. Then obviously you know the other you know the dual stuff, duels I tournaments we have going on. Junior and I'll be at I'll be at divisionals. Right, and the divisional state at Marysville. Yeah, Marysville, yeah. Darby, so um, then Neiman I think's gonna be at the other one there. So so and then obviously it's on the Cavalli after those. So it's um, got a lot lot going on <laughs> the next couple months. So. so. <laughs> Yeah. I just got tired thinking about it. All right, you got anything else for me? No, no, good to see you as always, man. Hey, congratulations on the, the, the win for Cohen. That was yeah. fun to watch. Yeah, fun, fun to capture on video. I'll send it to you. And, uh, hey, keep grinding. All right, keep building, keep growing, all right? Yeah.